when it comes to selling your home. At Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market. At Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374-0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Start a new career as an estate agent. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. Good evening. Yep, we made it through the potholes. We're live here from the heart of Glasgow. This is Paul Cooney with the football legend John Hartson and a Rangers, Brighton, Hove Albion. I'll try and get them all in there. Sheffield United, St Mirren, Hibs, and currently Air United, and Scotland winger and star still playing, Jamie Murphy. Jamie, welcome to Go Radio. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Great to have you with us tonight. And significant that your old team Rangers went joint top of the table and there's just one goal in it as we go into tonight's game, Celtic playing at Hibs. How did you feel about last night? Yeah, it was obviously a big win for them. I mean, something they want is to get to the top of that table. So uh, it was good to obviously see them get there. But, you know, there's a long way to go. You played Motherwell as well. And John, you left Celtic just as he went to Motherwell. Otherwise, you'd have come up against each other. I think me and Jamie just missed each other, yeah. But uh, listening to his clubs then, still playing at air, of course. Um, No, he's been a good player. And as I said, he's got many more years left, I hope, Jamie. 2-1 2-1 Rangers last night mm. against Aberdeen. Not without controversy. We'll talk about it. It was a good game to watch. And what about Motherwell? 5-0 against yeah, good, Ross County. My goodness, your old team Motherwell really needed that, Jamie. Yeah, they've picked up the last month or so uh, after having a bad run. So, yeah, they're looking up way up the way now that rather than down the way. So, uh, here's hoping they can keep doing well for the rest of the season. And, of course, your team very much in the news, uh, United, because uh, you're up against Rangers this weekend. Mixed feelings for you going back there. Scott Brown will lead you out, of course, as your new manager. Yeah, looking forward to going back. Uh, obviously, want to win at Air United, so uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, it's also going to be a tough game, but, you know, a couple shocks happen now and again, so hopefully one's, one happens on Saturday. Philippe Clement, I think his tongue was in his cheek, uh, John, when he said today, he's looking forward to going up against a manager who doesn't like us very much. As Scott Brown came back and said, I've got a lot of love for Rangers. It was all in the past. So I think that's good banter. There'll be respect between the two. But yeah. that's weekend, John, isn't it? The Scottish Cup still away, away. The title race, you've said it for weeks, has been on. Celtic have let a lot slip. And uh, tonight, well, it's, it's neck and neck now. It's in both of their hands. There's only one goal between them. You're absolutely right, Paul. Celtic have uh, let a good lead slip. Um, too many poor performances, too many must-win games. Celtic not being able to get the job done. If you like, you go you go to the weekend, Aberdeen. Two or three weeks before that, Hearts at home, Kilmarnock away, Motherwell home, Hibs away. They've just dropped far too many points. They've, they've not been anywhere near their best. They've not been clinical enough. Um, not gone out to the pitch and, and realised, you know, what's at stake. 40 million, a Champions League place, but also a league title. But uh, last night, Rangers showed again um, in a difficult evening, they're able to grind results out. You know, the, the, the crowd are gathering momentum, so are the players. It's another great result for them, and they, they've lost one game in 18. So that is some form, and, and Rangers are coming like a train, Paul. So. Celtic need to get going, they need to start playing better, um, taking their opportunities, defend strongly, all these things, they need to get players back from injury. And it goes without saying that, you know, there is a serious race on this year between Celtic and Rangers. 2-1 for Rangers last night against the Dons, this is the manager afterwards. They played a really good game today, a really dominant game. But these are the kind of games that you have in a season when the circumstances are not on your side. You totally dominate the first half, you have the chances to score more than one. A few blocks, a lot of people in the box, just people throwing their bodies in front of our players to shoot. Goalkeeper who plays also a really good game today, and for sure in the second half also. And then you have this one moment, that's also the quality of Miofsky. He doesn't need much to score goals. So you get a knock there just before halftime and then it's important to, to stay calm and, and to continue what you've been doing and not to start it out. I think that's a massive step forward, that the team is ready to do that now, that the dressing room is ready to do that and on the other side that the fans are ready to do that. 
It's a big difference with a few months ago that the belief stays and everybody keeps on pushing to get the result. That was one circumstance. Then the second circumstance is the, is the red card. If, yeah, 10 minutes before the end of the game. So you need to struggle these last 10 minutes also, although it was not really a struggle that we give away a lot. We had even chances to score also a goal because we kept on going. But it makes the game more difficult to, to finish off the game. And if we stay with 11, it was a, a different end of the game. But maybe at the end, it's good also to, to show everybody how aligned everybody is in the club now, fans and, and players, because it was amazing to feel this energy out of the stands these last 10 minutes. Jamie Murphy, what do you make of what the manager said after last night's game? Do you agree with him? Yeah, I think especially first half, Rangers were the, the dominant team. They kept the ball well. They had a few chances. Yeah. They could have been up by a couple more. But the goal before half time really changes everything. And, you know, you're under a little bit of pressure, second half. But, yeah. you know, Rangers came more into the game as the second half went on and then finally got that goal. Matondo got the first in seven minutes and it was it was all Rangers. It was a bit like the game at Petodri at the weekend with Celtic, except Celtic didn't score in the first half, but they dominated. And then Majofsky. John, what a striker he is. We talked about him for weeks and yeah. weeks. Would he go to Celtic? Could he go to Rangers? I mean, what do you make of the North Math Ma Macedonian striker? <laughs> well, I, th I thought um, he would have been a good signing for Celtic. And I also think, I think the fee was... Around about £6 million, pound, but I think Celtic could have got him for a little bit less than that, maybe four or something. But they never signed never signed a striker. They went for a winger and obviously Clune um, and obviously the the lad that came up from Norwich. You know, so for me, um, they might rue that. They might not They might rue not adding in the January window, especially now they're on level points and, and, and they've given up an awful lot of points with really bad performances. Um so for me, it's game on. And uh, Rangers last night, they dug in. They dug in for points. And uh, you look at Cantwell's goal. He followed up Tom Lawrence's shot. Maybe the goalkeeper should have done a bit better. And the Aberdeen should have pushed it out maybe for a corner to the side. But Cantwell's in there looking for rebounds, you know, first to react. So they're doing very well at the minute. And as I said, they're on a magnificent run. And... Um, you know, we always talk about this is a must-win tonight for Celtic. It was a must-win game at the weekend. It was a must-win game against Hearts because Celtic were in front and they wanted to keep that momentum and keep that lead. The team have allowed Rangers to come back at them and Rangers also give them credit that they've been in great form. But as I said, it, it's game on now. Will Celtic flick the switch that changes them to be the team that won the title, won a treble last season. Well, they have to. They have to find a way, Paul. What do they have to do, John, when you watch it? I know there's no... If, there, if it was that easy, then it would happen. But there's something... They have to, they have to start putting teams to bed. Um, they have to start... They're creating opportunities. They need to be more clinical. They want more from the wide men to, to create opportunities. The midfield, to, 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 to make sure that Kyogo is getting service and he's getting supply. They need to defend strongly, not like they did that at the weekend, in allowing Aberdeen to literally run the full length of the pitch and then slip it to Majofsky, who scores a goal. They need to be better than that. They need to track runners, all these things that, that we associate Celtic with. You know, play good football, score an awful lot of goals. You know, it's OK saying about we should have done better <clears throat> in the transfer market, but we are where we are now. You can't change that. You know, so they have to go with the squad they've got, the players that they have. And hopefully, for their sake and the supporters' sake, they can find a way. A good result tonight, for instance, a good win, might just kick them on a little bit. Sometimes that's all it needs. But again, you know, a, a tough game at, at Easter Road okay. to, to go into. Celtic fans, what are you thinking? You can speak to John Hartson or Jamie Murphy, the former Scotland and Rangers star. You know the number, 08, 08 17 17 700, or join the conversation on WhatsApp or on the socials at Go Football Show. Jamie Cantwell's goal, he took it well. What about the keeper? Could he have done better? Roos could have palmed it away? I think it's a bit harsh on the second but, one, but certainly, first, the, certainly the first goal, he's, he's got to do better. Yeah. One of the goalies at United this morning says he thought he might have been trying to catch it, but I'm not so sure. It's, but I think you're looking for your goalie to do better, especially the first goal. I said he, he had a couple of parries last night. There was a couple of times where mm. the ball's maybe bounced off mm. him where it shouldn't have. I think you rate him as a keeper, don't you? Most people oh, say yeah. he's done really well, but he seemed to be doing it all the time last night in both goals. 
Yeah, he's probably. definitely a, a good yep. goalie, one of the best in the league, probably. Uh, but you know, sometimes I think if you're going to Highbrox or, or Celtic Park or whatever, you, you really need a big performance from your goalkeeper. It would really help. <laughs> it's so. not Scottish football without controversy. There's two things probably: the red card for Dujon Sterling, who came on and then got a red, a straight red, and for only the second time this season, the referee looked at VAR, which usually means change of decision. So it was a straight red. And then he looked at it and um, decided not to change his mind. And also, Conor Goldson, did he handle in the box? Well, he did, but was it intentional? Was it, should it have been punished? Here's what the manager, Philippe Clement, said about the red card. Yeah, that it's a harsh decision for me. Because the Dujon slipped and he hits the toes of the opponent. So I didn't see until now many, many red cards that you touch an uh, opponent at his toes. If I look back, I, I cannot remember one moment. So that's a harsh one, and that makes the, uh, the end of the game more difficult. <laughs> it's also a difficult profession, I know, because we need to do it every day in the training to make decisions. So at the end, the referee decides, and we need to accept it. So Rangers are considering, he said, they're considering uh, appealing that red card. Jamie, what did you feel? I think, I think it's probably a harsh red card, but I'm not sure about appealing it. I, I mean, you can see... Maybe why the referee thought it might have been a red card with the speed he comes in and that that kind of thing. But I think it's pretty clear that he, he stands on him, so he does make contact. But there is a slip in there as well that that he could maybe say he doesn't mean or whatever. Yeah. But I think I, I think appealing it would wouldn't be the way I would do it anyway. John, I don't think Sterling can actually. He tries to slow himself down a little. He comes in quite quite quickly, and um, the, the, as as um, Jamie's saying, there's a little bit of contact, but. I think if you're looking to send players off for that type of tackle, then you get a lot of red cards this season. I think he's a bit unfortunate. And as I said, uh, um, but after that, I thought Rangers played the last 10 minutes very well. They saw the game out with 10 men. Aberdeen didn't put enough pressure on them when they were down to 10 men. Um, and as I said, Aberdeen, they got they got an equaliser right on half time. And I expected a bit more from them then in, in the second half, having got back in the game. And I, I don't think they offered enough, especially going forward. Rangers fans, what are you thinking? Can you believe it? You're joint top of the table. You're one goal behind Celtic after... And, well, no, you're even in games. But Celtic have, are playing tonight. So, you know, you got used to saying there's a game in hand. but And there is. But what's going to happen tonight? Celtic fans, what do you reckon? It's hard to believe, Jamie, that, that your old club, Hibs, apparently... Brendan Rodgers has never won there with Celtic, which you find hard to believe given what happened the last time round. No, I mean, that was a big thing when I first went in there. Rodgers had just left and oh, the boys right. were saying that Celtic didn't have a great record at Easter Road. So I think even the first couple of games that I played against them there, they, they didn't win the game either. So they'll be looking to change that. Yeah. Obviously, under Postacoglu, it was a little bit different. They, they, they were a, a real force, so... They'll be looking to get back to that kind of form, especially at Easter Road. How surprised are you, as a you're a Rangers fan as well as a former Rangers player? Did you think when Michael Beale was dismissed after the Aberdeen game that probably the title would be gone? Probably. It was never over totally, but I remember Rangers fans saying, well, a cup is a must for whoever the new manager is. Did you think Rangers could come back by the first week in February and be joint top? No, definitely not. I mean, you always hold out hope as a supporter that things can change pretty quickly. Uh, and that's exactly what's happened. Clement's come in and he's done a fantastic job so far. Uh, don't get it wrong, a lot of it's to do with Celtic being, being a bit below par and, and losing games and, and not picking up points where maybe they should have. But all Rangers can do is, is worry about themselves and you know try and win every game that comes their way, which they seem to be doing at the minute. Well, it's a very important trophy, you know, the Carabao Cup, because it's the first one. It's the first trophy in the calendar, and it's almost... Yeah, the Viaplay. Like yeah. yeah, the yeah. Viaplay, yeah. sorry, of Carabao. That's okay, it's the English um, one, because you've won them all, John. It's you've been, won, it's been yeah, the Carabao. It, that's been many down south. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, I'm going to yeah. pull you up for every mistake you yeah, make, yeah. Paul. Oh, no, 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 it's not, not at all. Just <laughs> no, I just think um, you know, getting that first League Cup trophy, if you like, um, you can almost then play with a bit of freedom, because you, you've got one trophy in the cabinet. And, um, yeah, they'll, they'll want all three. They'll, they'll want all three under Clement. He's very, um, he's very assured in terms of how he wants to play, how he wants to set his team up. He's, he's put pressure on his players to, to go and, you know, perform. And, um, Is it going to be different for them, John, now that they're top 
you know, the joint top, let's say. So Rangers could go clear. Is it different from your experience when you are out in front? They're not at the moment, it's neck and neck. Well, having but... been behind for so long, yeah. I think they'll embrace this. They'll want to stay there. The hard thing that Rangers had to do, the most difficult thing they had to do was claw back, mm. you know, um, the points gap. Now they've done that, they'll want to kick on and it's up to Celtic to, to respond and start winning games on a consistent basis when you go away from home, in, in particular when you go to Hibs, like they drew at Hibs last time out, you know, they, they, they lost um, to Kilmarnock, uh, home to heart. So, listen, you've got nobody else to blame. If you haven't took the opportunities to, to, to strengthen your lead and go further away from Rangers... You know, I wouldn't even say that Celtic have allowed Rangers to come back. Rangers have been on a great run. So credit to them for clawing the, uh, you know, the deficit back. And obviously now they're top of the table. But very few people thought Celtic would drop points to Kilmarnock and to Hearts. And, and Aberdeen away from home, that's normally yeah. uh, the kind of game that they would enjoy. Um, but it wasn't the case at the weekend. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700 on the day after Rangers go joint top of the table. Celtic can go ahead by three points or one point or uh, could it be a defeat tonight? Hard to believe that Brendan Rodgers hasn't won with Celtic tonight. Jamie Murphy, would you expect Celtic to win tonight at Easter Road? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. uh, you have to take into account the form of Hibs at the minute has not been great. I don't think they've won uh, many points in the last six or seven games. So I think if you're Celtic, you, you really should be thinking about going there and, and probably turning them over from the form that they've been in. Lost 3-0 to St Mirren at the weekend. Uh, but you know, it could work the opposite. Hibs could be have a right rocket, as you say, from the manager uh, and come out come out firing. But, you know, I think you're still expecting Celtic to go and win that game. Let's hear from Brendan Rodgers speaking last night ahead of the game and saying whatever's happening at the top, there's a long, long way to go. Listen, there's still such a long way to go. There's a long way to go. It's... You know, the finish line's not even in sight. You know, you just got to go game by game, keep working well, keep your focus, and then pressure really comes later, a lot later down the line. But at this point, you, you focus on your performance, and uh, and that's, that's our only focus and control on what you can. There's no doubt we've dropped points this year, and, you know, it's uh, something that... Um, we we need to be better at in this next part, but um, but I, I I don't worry about about where we finish now. It's about going into the next game. Some good news for the Celtic fans is that uh, the Japanese star Maeda he's back from the tournament. Yeah, he, he's actually in a better place now than what he was when he left because he was still trying to find himself up to speed. He's gone away. He's trained. He's played some games. I spoke to him when he did come back, and uh, he feels ready to start if we need him. John, you feel they've missed Maeda? Yeah, I think they've missed his energy, they, they missed his power going forward. He's totally different to any other player at Celtic Paul. I think when he's on song, he can be very, very good. Not only does he does he um, defend brilliantly when Celtic need him, uh, he goes forward, he's quick, you know, he shows defenders a clean pair of heels when he gets when he gets in his stride. And he can also score. I remember um I think it was last season under Ange. He scored a brilliant goal away at uh, Easter Road. I think he cut inside from the left-hand side and he hit a, a great strike from outside the box. I think Celtic won 3-0 uh, on that particular night. But yeah, Maeda offers you an awful lot and if he's back and if he's fit, um, you know, after his exploits with, with Japan, mm. then I, I'm, I'm sure he'll be a contender to start. How much are they missing Hatate? Although I know Bernardo has fitted in really well and at the back, Carter Vickers out for another few weeks. They've not had it easy injury-wise this season. No, they haven't, but all teams have injuries, yeah. in all fairness, and I don't think Brendan will want to make excuses up about injuries. He's got... He's got the likes of Lager, Bielka, um, you know, he's he doesn't got fancy him, though, does he? Stephen yeah. Wells, so it doesn't matter if he fancies him or not. If, he's, if he hasn't got any other defenders, you know, um, you've got Alistair Johnson, you know, and, and obviously uh, I think the midfield, you know, you know, you know the midfield, McGregor, O'Reilly, uh, Bernardo of, of late. Um, and they got three good frontmen, Clune, you know, yeah. whether, whether Abada starts and obviously Kyogo. Um, so they're still a very strong team, but they just dropped some points and uh, allowed Rangers to come back into it. 
Someone they have missed in the last couple of weeks is Greg Taylor. What's the latest on the left back? Hopefully, well, we'll see how he is for the weekend. But he's out on the pitch, he's, he's moving really well, working well. It'll just be getting the sign-off, really, from the, the medical team. And um, we'll see. If, if it's not the weekend, then he, he'll be ready for the next game. Jamie, what do you make of the Celtic side who have um, they've won virtually everything for the last number of years? But it's a transitional year, isn't it? Yeah, I think the problem is they were that good under Postacoglu that whoever was coming in, it was going to be a more difficult job. You know, obviously Rodgers is a top coach. He's, he's been there and done it. Uh, but, you know, you can even see, like, even him having to change it from the way they were playing last year to how he wants to play. It's not a struggle, but there is a little bit of adaptation to take place. Uh, he wants his own players in. He, he made that quite clear. So, you know, you're probably seeing that Celtic now. Now, if they were well, all the while that they're doing that, can they still go out and win the league? Would be a real success for them. But, you know, after the last couple of years, the highs that they've had, you know, maybe this was the deal that things maybe had to change a little bit. But that doesn't mean they don't want to go out and still win everything. And they're still capable of winning everything. It's clear. And you can imagine he wants his own players in, John. That's what happens. After the transfer window, he said, yep, the board, well, he didn't say the board, the club could be braver in the transfer market. We're going to speak to John Hartson and Jamie Murphy about that. Looking back last night on Motherwell as well, five goals. And Stuart Kettlewell said it could have been more. And we'll hear more from Clement and Rogers. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. Last night in the Cinch Premiership, it ended up Rangers 2 Aberdeen won. And then what about Motherwell? Ross County, 5-0 for Motherwell. And would you call it a worldie, the Blair Spittle goal? Here's the description from Jamie Murphy. Yeah, well, a worldie's <laughs> probably right, yeah. But the goal of the season contender is probably another one. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just hit it perfect and it was flying right into the top corner. It was definitely one of the ones. John, it was yeah. an absolute belter, wasn't it, from Blair Spittle? But more importantly, I suppose, the Motherwell fans were desperate for a win last night and they got it, big style. And they got it, and uh, it was a wonderful goal, wasn't it? You know, it sort of it sort of moved it out of his feet and he just whips it in that top corner. It just kept his height, didn't it? And it just keep it at absolutely no chance. It was a brilliant goal from um, from Spittle. Yeah. Nearly as good as your goal at Anfield, which we'll never forget, Jamie. Oh, it, might been, it might yeah. have been better than that, but obviously uh, the occasion that Anfield <laughs> might, have just, uh, <laughs> might have just took it, yeah. That was one of the massive nights going in, and you know, all the Liverpool's a fantastic club and all the big names are going in. Yeah, yeah. what's going to happen? Who's going to be in the next round and all that? Honestly, that was some I of the chat. Doubt, Paul. Yeah, well, that's what, <laughs> that's what you and Martin and Neil and Henry Larson thought, and it was you and... Alan Thompson that night, wasn't it? Yeah, Tom, I think he, he, he meant that <laughs> goal under the... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just, the, 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 wall, the wall moved yeah. out the road, that <laughs> one. Uh, that's the one, yeah. yeah. So we'll sprinkle this, Jamie, because it's your first time here on the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. You're OK? They're great people, Go Green Property. We joke about that with uh, uh, Barry and uh, Big John. <laughs> what's, uh, have you, what's the nearest to a world that you've scored? Maybe you have scored. What's your most memorable goal? Uh, I'd like to think I've scored a couple of... Good ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one that sticks out in my head is uh, I scored one against Hamilton for Mullow when Craig Brown had just taken over. Right. And then he told me before every game after that, to, if you get a shot, if you get a chance, have a shot. Because right. yeah. he's seen that one goal. Oh. How far out was it? Or was it wide? Or... Uh, I, I, I add yards on there every yeah, time course. I talk about yeah. it. But, uh, yeah, yeah, 25 yeah. to 30. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. What was right it like um, working for Craig? We oh, so many great stories yeah. about him. It was brilliant, and you know, sadly we we, yeah. we lost him this year. Yeah, yeah. It was really sad. Uh, but I've got a lot of time for him. He looked, really looked after me as a young Didn't player. Yeah. Uh, even going up to Aberdeen, he would sit right behind the subs bench. I'd go up and see him before the game because uh, he really helped me out. Just you know, as he gave me the number nine at Motherwell uh, oh, without wow. me without me asking for it. That, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. He, mm. he he really looked after me and just you know things that not everyone hears about. For example, I told him it was my twenty-first birthday, and could I take a few of the boys out for you know a little night out? Uh -huh. Obviously, if he allowed it, and he was like, "Yeah, no problem." Where did and, you go? Oh, it was in Glasgow. Somewhere. All right, okay. No, I thought it was maybe Motherwell. Yeah, yeah. 
he, ne- he never quite came with us, but he, tur- he turned up the next morning with an envelope of uh, £250 that he said was from the chairman. Fantastic. Brilliant. But, Did he? Uh, oh. I, I always knew deep down that it wasn't really from the chairman, it was from him, but we, he never he never mm. mentioned it. So. John, that's special, isn't it? Managers that yeah. take you under their wing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I've played George Graham with you. Them yeah, days, but, yeah. Uh, you know, with, with Craig Brown, he's one of those people that I've never heard... Like, I, I had six years in playing at Celtic, and I've had been up here now living in Edinburgh for nine years. In the 15 years, I've, sp- I've done dinners with Craig, and yeah. I've been around him. I've never heard anybody say a bad word about him. Yeah. He's so loved yeah. by everybody. did great things with the Sc- Scottish wow, national exactly. team. Yeah. Aberdeen as well. He's had yeah. several clubs, and... Whenever Craig Brown is mentioned, it's mm. always in a positive way. You know, how nice a man he was. Absolutely. Clyde as well, they loved him when yeah. we started yeah. out. And of course, he did such great work down at Air. Uh, Craigie College, you're at Air United now. So, Sheffield United, you came up against, well, alongside somebody that we know really well, of course, Stephen McGinn. But you and Stephen came from fairly close to each other. Yeah, he was yeah. from... Uh... Well, all the McGinns were obviously from Clybank. I was, yeah. uh, I grew up in Yorkshire. Oh, so, close, uh, yeah. across the, across the flyover. Yeah. Shall we say? Yeah, and then you were at Brighton. Did you enjoy your time there? Three years at Brighton. Yeah, I loved it. Uh, we managed to have a, a really good team, pretty mm-hmm. successful. You know, getting to the Premier League, that kind of thing. Who was your manager? Uh, Chris Hutton was the manager, oh, yeah, of course. Who was, who was just at the African Cup of Nations with Ghana there. Yeah. It didn't go too well for him, but yeah, he, he was excellent to work for and really detailed with. With all his thoughts and all his tactics. So what happened going to it was your boyhood club, wasn't it, Rangers? What 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 was the moment when you found out I'm going to Ibrox? Yeah, it was pretty surreal. I, I mean, it's for myself, for myself as well as my dad was a season ticket holder at Ibrox. To, uh, so just that moment and knowing that you're going to play for Rangers, it was it was really big for for me and him. And who signed you? It was Graham Murray at the time. Uh, you know. Uh, he'd taken over uh, from Kashinia, so it was just after a pretty rough period yeah. for Rangers. But you know, I think maybe other people were looking at it and maybe thinking about going somewhere else. But I had a couple of teams down south that I could maybe I went to. Bristol City was was the big one, but you know there was there was only one place I was going. And we all say it's massive football club. Say the same where John was at Celtic. You know, as Scots, we're really proud of this city. It's amazing. It's the football capital we think of what the world. What was it like when you went into the club then? Was it as big as you thought? Was it different? Was it... Yeah, it was as big as I thought. I know I know they sign players and they come in and they say, oh, I didn't know it was like this. Mm. Obviously having experience up here, I kind of knew what it was like and I kind of preempted what was maybe going to happen here and there. And, you know, social media is a, such a big thing now, but I turned the notifications off, all that, got, got ready for, for coming up because I know what it's like. But, yeah... I can say uh, at the time it wasn't where it should have been. Uh, maybe behind the scenes with, with different things and players and some players not want to be there. Mm. You know, you had the kit deal going on, everyone had different training kits, so it wasn't at the level that a big club should have been at the time. Uh, and it really took Stephen Gerrard to come in in that summer and change what felt like everything around the club and, and got it back to to probably the level it should have been. There's there's a name, isn't it, John? As a as a player, Stephen Gerrard. Yeah, yeah, great player. Yeah. Um, but I think in Glasgow, you know, it's um, it controls the city. I think I think it dominates the city in so many ways because it's, it's it's split down the middle, isn't it? Celtic and Rangers, and to have two magnificent sides with the fan base all over the world and. You know, a, a global reputation that they've got on the history, I think, that the both clubs have got and the history that they've got against each other as well. So I think a lot of people that have never been to a Derby or Celtic Rangers game, I think they must come and, and, and experience it, taste it, you know, because um, if you haven't, then you're missing out because there's, there's something unreal when you play in them. The atmosphere, the buzz, you know, the crowd... Um, you know, they are very, very, very special games. And uh, I always say to people, if you've never, ever travelled up to Glasgow, it's hard to get tickets now, Paul. <laughs> but um, and if you've never been to one, you've got to experience it. 
more on Jamie Murphy's career as we continue tonight on the programme on the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, John Harson, Jamie Murphy, Paul Cooney. 0808 08, 17 17 700 because we've got loads of games on tonight. But still looking back at last night, Rangers going joint top, just one goal behind Celtic. Here's Philippe Clement saying, you know, yeah, we've won the League Cup. Well, we want more. It's my ambition also to win everything. Until now, I never, I never did it with the team to win everything in a season. So I have high ambitions always. And uh, it's great to feel it. And that was for me one of the major reasons to come to this club uh, compared to other possibilities because I knew how incredible it can be when all these fans are behind the team and how much energy that can give. I love this job. I, if we win things, if you see the joy from the players, from the staff, from the fans, there I get my energy out to, to work hard every day. So I get a lot back now. John, I think that's the first time I've heard him saying he wants to win. He always says he wants to win every game, of course. Yeah. But in a way, that's saying he wants to win the League Cup, the Scottish Cup and the, the title as well. Well, that's what he wants. And, and he's come out and he's said it. Uh, that's what he expects of his players. He's obviously very confident. He believes in his team. They can win everything. Mm -hmm. You know, there's another... They're still in Europe. They're going well in Europe and they've still got the league. They've just clawed a, a points deficit back. They're joint top of the league. Um, they play Air United on, on the weekend in the Scottish Cup. So, you know, there is an opportunity for them to win everything, whether whether they do it, whether, whether Celtic... You know, let's not forget that um, Celtic have won the league in the last two seasons. I can go on about the previous, whatever it was, the run that they've been on. But why not? He's obviously very confident to, to, to put that out, there, that out there in the public. But I think his players w would, wouldn't mind him saying that because he's putting pressure on his players. But he feels that the players would respond to that pressure. Jamie? He's surprised in some ways. He's, he's talking about a treble. He hasn't said treble. But that's what that means, to win everything. And the conversation has started just in the last few days, some Rangers fans saying, I think we can win a, a treble. Yeah, well, if you're Rangers or Celtic manager coming in and you only want to win the double, then I think there's a little bit of a problem. Yeah. You want to be coming in and you want to be winning every trophy that you possibly can, out with Europe, which is always going to be difficult. So I'm sure that was his aim when he came in. Whether or not he thought it was going to happen this season and, and so quickly, uh, you could argue that, but... Now they're here. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with a manager coming out and saying it. Because, uh, you know, players will be listening to that and they think, oh, we know what he wants, we've got, to, we've got to go out there and do it. Absolutely. Totally yeah. agree. Well, Brendan yeah. Rodgers wanted to win the treble. Yeah. Well, you know, we'd seen what yeah. Ange had done last season. Um, he would have come in believing and wanting to win the yeah. treble. Unfortunately, they, they had a poor performance against Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock were very, very good yeah. on the day. Give them credit. So... Celtic yeah. will only try and they can only physically and possibly win the double now, but that's exactly what Brendan Rogers' thoughts were when he came to the club. Here's someone who's really happy tonight. It's our celebrity Motherwell fan, Stephen Reside, is on the line. Good evening, Stephen. How are we doing, guys? Hi, Stephen. All right, Stephen. Good, yeah. Jamie's happy. His old club Rangers, yeah, he will not be thinking about that this weekend, playing Air United against them, but yet, yeah, joint top of the table. What about the well last night? 5 0, and the manager says you should have had more. Uh, but I was growing and then we, we've been taking chances and the five games that we've been unbeaten uh, stretching back to when we beat Wellington but everything we stated last night is we just need to take no in fact I say that we could, we could easily have added more and take that result again but no fantastic um, and I just want to highlight there's a lot of people talking about the first battle but yeah. for me since Paul McGinn came back in, in the back line We've looked much more solid. He doesn't do anything fancy. He's just a 7 out of 10 constantly. Sometimes that's what you need. He's absolutely fantastic. But to get that win last night, we're now 12 points off the bottom. Six mm. points clear of county. I know county have a game in hand, but that's the way it is. Expect me just to win that. I'm just thinking now, with a point off, I've been sick. We can maybe start looking up the table. That's right, you're one point off top six. So, as you know, Jamie is with us tonight. Jamie, that's your old neighbour that he's talking about. Yeah, Paul McGinn is just, uh, what, a year or so younger than you, a couple of years. Um, he is one of these ones that sometimes goes unnoticed, but he's he was out, obviously, through injury, and they missed him. Yeah, he's a very underrated player, in my opinion, having played with him, having played against him. 
Uh, he's got certain qualities that are very, very, very good. You know, he's a great one v one defender. I know Ryan Kent always used to have a bit of trouble going up against him. Uh, and he's obviously from a good family as well. You know, they're, they're obviously going to be good players. It's a football but family, isn't it? Yeah. He, he was out injured for a little bit there, and he, but he's came back in and made a real difference playing in that uh, back three that they're playing at the minute. So, yeah, hopefully he keeps that going as well. Do you think Hibbs made a mistake letting him go too soon? I think so. Yeah. I think they made this mistake in terms of how they'd done it as well. I think he'd signed, been told he was signing a new deal and then new manager came in and he wanted of his course, own players. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm going to say he found a nice landing spot in Mullow, sure in my old team. Uh, you know, I think them as a team over the last four or five months it's not really been great but you know the last few games has it's put them right back into contention for that top six spot. and Steve, Stephen what about the opening goal Andy Halliday oh listen he was great last night um, I thought he was kind of a really kind of a player with top and just be a bit of experience and do the dirty stuff but last night he, he showed some real quality I mean he takes his goal really well and then he's passed for Blair Spittle's first goal was perfectly wasted and then Spitz just runs on it and does the rest. He, he's fantastic. I think we've got a real balance about the midfield now and that's something that you've heard me speaking about early in the season. I thought maybe the balance was, was missing in the middle. Yeah. Uh, we've got Jeff Kovsky in there and we've got an experience Andy Halliday. The midfield's doing that well that, that when in Miller he can't even get a start. Yeah, you're so on the bench. How can these players that are playing so well and listen we've got a tough run of fixtures coming up I mean with a, a way to Morton who I'm beating in 12 on Friday that's right it's a Friday and night you'll got, be there yep um, no I've got a gig so I won't be there but okay. I'm just hoping that we get through um, but then we've got Aberdeen away uh, next sure. week so I'll be going up to that John Harson wants to ask you a question, Stephen. Hi, Stephen. Well, the thing is, mate, you, after that win last yeah. night, now it's, it's given you a little bit of breathing space, you know. And what what you got to understand is you're only you're only one point from Dundee in sixth place. So with a couple of wins, mate, you can shoot yourself right up the table. So having having won really well last night, it's just finding that little bit of momentum and that more consistency sort of going forward. Well, that's exactly it. I think you look, at the, you look at the run that we went on last season, John. Yeah. yeah. Where we went on a great run from February right to the end of the season. And you see it this season where we went 15 without a win. It just shows you how important confidence and momentum is in football. Yeah, agreed. So, hopefully now we've got a bit of momentum. We're five on beam. We can go away to Aberdeen next week in the game against Falcon with no fear. We've got nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. And, and we seem to... Everybody knows their job, and for me, that's the most important thing. We seem to be well organised. Everybody knows what you need to do. And what's going to happen Friday night? You kick off the cup weekend, huge game. Capolo, they're on form at the morning at the moment. Uh, what's your scoreline, Stephen? I mean, Mark yeah. sitting in the studio, he was brilliant for the new Scottish Cup. Just had to get that in there. Then, but no, um, cheers, Stephen. I'm just hoping we win. I'll take a one now. I know G had the flights and I don't care. It's just all about getting your name in the hat. And I think, I know Morton are playing well, but I think we've got a bit of momentum now and Theo Bear's on fire. I mean, he's sure scored in the goal in his last five games. Yep. So hopefully that can continue. Um, and I'll go for the 2-1 Motherwell win. Jamie Murphy, you enjoyed your time at Motherwell. Yeah, I loved it. The, I mean, I was there for a long time. Stephen's dad was actually my coach under 13s, 14s. Ah, so... Bill, yeah, Bill guy. was in here last week. Yeah, yeah we love Bill. Yeah, so uh, I'm not so sure about Stephen, but we, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I have great memories there. I was there for well, Bill. under 11s was the, my first year there, and I was there till 23, 24. So I have some great times. I grew up there really, yeah. uh, and it's always one of the first results I look for. Great club, Stephen. Thanks so much for coming on. Hopefully, you'll be back in the studio as you were last week with us soon. Thanks, Stephen. Cheers, Stephen. Cheers, Stephen. Back on the line next, we'll be going to Jim. That's in just a moment. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. This is Glasgow Zone, Go Radio with Go Green Property. Paul Cooney, Jamie Murphy with us for the first time. And John Hartson. And on the line, a Rangers fan, Jim, is on after Rangers 2-1 win last night against the Dons. Hi, Jim. 
Evening, Paul. Evening, how uh, are Jamie, you? Big well done. Yeah, no bad. Uh, just a couple of things before I go on my point. Jamie, well done getting your, having your thing me dream of playing for the Rangers, mate. Big John. Thank uh, you. Last Thank season, you. mate, in a London airport when I was on my way to Germany with the oh, yeah. Rangers Charity Foundation walking, uh, walking uh, football team. Brilliant. Uh, did, we have, did we have a nice chat? Yes, we did, John. We, we, we got a wee team photo, John, because we always knew you were desperate to get in that Rangers squad, big man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll crack, I'll crack the jokes. Anyway, you're a big gentleman, John. You're a big gentleman, uh, Thanks, Paul. Uh, Thank you. Listen, but my, my, my point is about this. Again, last night, Aberdeen again, the frauds of Scottish football. Absolute disgrace. I'll tell you something. See, if I was an Aberdeen fan, I would be kicking up, you know, what, by the way, with that group of players earlier a period of time. Yet again, last night, as they did on Saturday against Celtic mm-hmm. in the second half producing performances like that. Mm-hmm. That team should never be in ninth in the Premier League if they would play like that every week. That's my point. They're, they're an absolute mm-hmm. fraud. I think you've got a very good point. I'm not saying they're a fraud, but what I would say is any team that comes up against Celtic and Rangers, I always think that because it's on television, because there's a big crowd, obviously, with the, with the travelling Rangers and Celtic support, I think other teams always give that little bit more because they're in the spotlight. And I always think as well, after, after a big game, now, after a big game for Aberdeen or Motherwell or other clubs, you have to look at the next performance because they put so much in to play in Celtic or Rangers. So I totally agree with you. And it, you, you, you but it's not, that's not a natural gym because when I was at West Ham, we'd go to Man United, look at the crowd, We'd give them a hard game, and then the following week, then we might not be quite at the same level. When you take on the best, players tend to try and raise their game because they know they're going to get more publicity from it, the opposition players, mm. the Aberdeens and the Motherwells, because it's generally on television. Mm. You're up against top-class internationals. But that must drive the fans nuts, as Jim is saying about the Aberdeen fans. It's not fair. Is it? They can play so well but against they find Rangers. It. For some Celtic. reason, other teams it's weird, find it? it. Psychology? Yeah, because yeah. they know they're up against yeah. the top team. Jamie, what do you think on that? Have you have you been in that position? Yeah, I've, I've been on both sides. And, you know, at Rangers, you used to say, like, this is their biggest game of the season. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. obviously against Rangers or Celtic. They're the games that maybe signings from, from abroad or, or England, that's the game that they're looking for. They're not looking for your Motherwolves or your Dundees or teams like that, they're looking when we play Rangers and Celtic, which isn't really how you should do it, but, mm. you know, that's just in, in people's minds. So they're always going to raise their game. Uh, look, they've, they've, they have raised their game and they've come out with uh, one point out of the two games, but, you know, they'll be looking to win all the rest of their games. That's what they should yep. be looking to do. Jim, what are you feeling about your own team now? You're top of the table, one goal behind Celtic. What do you think... The balance is changing. Is that going to be enough for you to be better than Celtic between now and the end of the season? Well, hopefully, but it's it's still too early. Football is a funny old game. Yeah. It can change overnight. I probably expect Celtic to go Easter Road to get about four or five off them easily tonight. I don't think they're playing too good, Tibbs. Mm-hmm. I think Celtic will still have too much for them. Uh, again, never know. The, the, the change in the transformation under Phil Clermont has been phenomenal. Rangers fan, I thought last night in the first half, I thought some of the football we played was was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I agree. I've, I've not seen half a Rangers team for a wee while. I agree, Jim. I just think that um, Rangers, they've got the bit between their teeth. They're on a marvellous run, obviously momentum, confidence, scoring goals. And sometimes when when you come up against a team and, and, and they're a little bit... Um, gritty and they're hard to break down you found a way to break them down last night with 10 men you hung on for that we didn't necessarily hang on but you sh- you, yeah, you, was, you held yeah. the lead if you like and you know you've lost one game in 18 uh, you know that that's not too um you can't turn your nose up at that you know that that's some form and it's almost like well people can say well Celtic have opened the door they've lost a couple of games but at the same time Celtic have opened door, but the Rangers have ran through it. You know, they've, they've totally caught up. And now, I said that at the start of the season, it's not the Celtic and Rangers games that, that settled the league. 
it's the games, you know. It's 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 last night maybe a tough game against Aberdeen. Celtic drawing at Aberdeen, losing at home to Hearts. Mm. It's these games, the Celtic and Rangers games. I think they're for the fans. They're brilliant derby games, but they they don't necessarily decide where the title goes. You've got to go and do it every single week, Jimmy. I think I think the big word, the key word at Rangers now is belief. I think since Clements came in. He's gave that belief back to everyone. You can even tell by watching the game last night. You know, sometimes when it gets a bit nervy, you know, you now and again get a little boo at Ibrox if it's yeah. not going the way. But there wasn't any of that last night. It was everyone's here, everyone's behind the team, everyone believes that they're going to go on to win the game, and everyone believes that they can go on and win the title. It's a good point, Jim. You know, Philip Clement spoke about the mentality of the fans. I, I don't think the fans are too busy with that. They they just feel that the football is much better that the team is fighting for everything in a good way, in a good football way, that all the squad is involved to, to give their best every day for the club. And it's something that uh, players have built, discredit again, that they lost in the beginning of the season. It's back there. So uh, it's important for us to, to keep on repeating that. And it's important for the fans also to keep on pushing the team through, uh, through difficult moments because they, they will come in the next couple of months. Jim, what do you feel about Todd Cantwell? Some people thought he might go in the window. He didn't, and he's scoring goals. I think he's got that kind of free run, uh, free reign to David. I'm not saying David wants, but he's going to yeah. give him back to the role where Bill didn't he play him there. Bill, Bill had him there at the end of last season, and he was, he was getting the goals the way he was getting them just now. But at the start of the season... Bill kind of alienated him, pushed him wide, and it just didn't suit him. Big Phil tried him out there and all, and it didn't work. Yeah. Now, he's, I think Clement's got the players round about him, and it's now allowed him to go and express himself. And I think that's what's happened. And last night, see the, see the biggest thing I felt last night was the game management in the last, mm-hmm. that last eight, nine minutes. Yeah. It was phenomenal for Rangers. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant, apart for the last ten seconds when they gave that free kick away. That's well, right. that, oh, here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it did look. It's not often, Jim, as a Rangers fan, you'll regret there being eight minutes. What did you think, Jamie, when you saw was, uh, oh no, ten men against the Dons who thought they might get something? Yeah, well, I know what I was thinking, but I'm pretty sure I knew what Aberdeen were thinking. They were thinking, like, we've got eight minutes here, we, we've got to go and get that goal. But it never really materialised. You know, Rangers did well at seeing the game out, kept the ball in the corner for a little bit, uh, used their brains, so... I think Aberdeen will be disappointed that they didn't make more chances in that that period of time. I think as well, I think uh, Philippe Clement has got the players on board. Um, I, I think he's um, he's got the respect uh, off the Rangers players. And I think when when you want to play for your manager, it, it's totally different. You know, you just go the extra yard for him. And um, I think he gets it, Philippe Clement. I think he gets yeah. the... The fact that um, that the players need an arm round them sometimes they need a bit of a rollick in, but you know in the last sort of three or four months you know you you have to give Rangers credit for the run that they've been on domestically and in Europe as well. Jim, next game as you know is up against the Honest Men. We've got one of the men here, former Ranger uh, Jimmy Murphy. Uh, what do you want to say to him? And we're listening carefully in case you're saying no, nah. uh, Jamie. You've been, you've been looking forward to this huge game for you. Yeah, as it is with everyone at here, it's been it's been an up and down season for us. But you know we've done well in the Scottish Cup so far and been rewarded with this tie, which has been great for the club. Obviously, they get a bit of financial backing mm-hmm. from it and, and that kind of thing. And people that have never played at Ibrox are going to get to experience playing there. So mm. you know everyone's looking forward to it. Uh, I hope we come out with a win. That's you know the competitor in me that always wants the team I'm playing for to win. Uh, I think some people don't understand that you're getting you get a few comments about yeah. like oh surely you you want to let Rangers win and I'm like no chance that's, that's, you, that's you, not you, how we want your manager as well Scott Brown he's not he's not got a bad record at Ibrox has he <laughs> no he hasn't I know he, he can't play but he's still yeah. going there as manager I, I think he could yeah. probably still play if he, if he wanted to. he's joined in a couple of times <laughs> yeah. J- Jim what would you say to Jamie for the game. <laughs> I'm not going to say any Jamie I hope it's no good luck son You sound like my dad I just had a real laugh there when yeah. you, Paul I had a laugh there when you said about honest men come to Ibrox <laughs> I see one of them is Willie Collum eh? <laughs> I, I see Willie Collum is and he's a top referee <laughs> I thought it was harsh that, the, the way that your club went for him after the the old firm derby but that's my personal opinion and listen he's a good referee but listen he gets it wrong sometimes 
But uh, yeah, he's. I think the SFA. Yeah, he's the referee this weekend. He's got to be back in there sooner rather than later. It's probably the right thing, Jim, isn't it? Yeah, probably is. Yeah. Let's see if that happens anyway. Cheers, good to hear you. Thank you, Jim, a big Rangers fan there. Yeah, Willie Collum is the referee this weekend. Who would be a referee, Jimmy? I mean, it's... Not me. No, the toughest, John. I think it's an easy job now because they can check everything up to VAR. I really do. I don't think the referees are allowed now just to go and referee the game. It's so easy. It's an easy way out for them. Whatever they're not undecided on or they don't really get a right view, upstairs to VAR. VAR, you know, the referee should be allowed to ref the game. News is next. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go! When it comes to selling your home, at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market, at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go! You know what's on tonight. Kilmarnock against Livingston, 745. St Mirren against Dundee, one of your old teams, Jamie Murphy. St Johnson against Hearts. And at 8 o'clock, the main event, Hibs against Celtic at Easter Road. Last night, Motherwell 5, Ross County nil. Stephen Reside was on saying you were one of his favourite ever players, Jamie, at uh, Fair Park and an even better guy. So thank you, Stephen, for that. And Rangers going joint top of the table. Just one goal behind Celtic. 2-1 win last night against Aberdeen. Matondo opening the scoring seven minutes. Majofsky right on half time. And then it was Todd Cantwell in 72 minutes. So what's going to happen tonight? Neck and neck. A big Celtic fan is on the line, Reagan. Good evening, Reagan. Oh, it's good to be on. Thank you for having me again. Good. Hi, good Reagan. To, good to hear you. Big John Hi, there. How are you doing? Hi, Paul. Hi, Reagan. And Hi. Jamie on his debut tonight. He's back for the second hour, so that's always good. Thank you, very <laughs> Thank you. Reagan, what are you thinking? What's happened? Um, what I'm thinking today, Paul, is I'm looking for Brendan Rodgers to win because he's not, he's not actually won against... Uh, team that's played at Easter Road yep. so I'm hoping that you can break that hoodoo tonight because for me this is a massive game this can turn momentum in Rangers favour if Celtic don't win um, I'm just hoping against hope that Celtic win this game you know and, th- and this shouldn't be the case they-, they should be going into the game full of um, self motivation and mm-hmm. self uh, belief of, uh, 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 after a very good transfer window, but that's not happened. So, um, but, full, but full credit to Rangers and fellas come on because they've took advantage of Celtic's downfall. So, um, I think we're definitely in for a, a, a great second half of the season. Um, but in terms of Celtic, I, I do hope that we see um, Adam Eda tonight because I thought he was impressive when he came on on uh, Saturday and I think he's somebody that we can... Hopefully, see in the next few matches. Right, let's throw that one to John Harrison and also ask John his team for tonight. So, would Ida start alongside Kyogo or instead of? Or what do you reckon, John? Um, I think Reagan's got a valid point, but I, I think Kyogo will start. Um, and I think he'll maybe try and give Ida some minutes on the pitch. Yeah, he was impressive at the weekend, I thought. Looked strong, didn't he? You know, he got involved. He gets he gets yeah, hold of the ball. He runs in behind. Um, but the team that I that I would like to see, I would love to see it to get an opportunity. I would love to see Saturday play two up. I really, really would like a four four two change of formation. They've been playing four three three for God knows how long now. That's been their system. Brendan has pretty much stuck to it. You know, he's. I think he, now they've got uh, a free, a free striker join that possibly helps. Brendan, because the fact that they only had one striker probably didn't help Brendan. I know they have three strikers. So you think they might play uh, two? Yeah, I think they might play two. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd love I'd love to see two strike. I always played with a partner. You did. You yeah. know, I just think you can link up together. Yeah. There's two there's two centre forwards running in the box, you know, making good runs, getting across each other. I think it confuses the defenders when you've got two. I think sometimes when you've got one up, you know, you're up against two centre backs mm-hmm. and it can be difficult unless you're getting lots of position or lots of possession yeah. on the ball. So what's your team tonight? John, well, my, my team yeah. would be what I think, right? It's not the team that I believe I would pick. So I'd go Hart in goal, Johnson right back, Navroski and Scales at the back, Ralston left back, McGregor, O'Reilly, Bernardo, and I think it'll be Maeda on the right, Kyogo through the middle, and I think he'll stick with Palmer on the left. Do you, John? You'll stick with Palmer. I think He's that's what he'll do. Yeah. But he could, he, he could play Kuhn, mm-hmm. he could play Adar. Yep. You know, for me, he, he could well do that. Um, in my opinion, I think they should be given an opportunity. But I believe that's the team that Brendan will pick. Jimmy Murphy, what would be your Celtic team tonight? Uh, I've got heart and goals, obviously. Yep. Johnston's played every game he's going to play, and then your maybe question in the centre half. Mm-hmm. But I think he will stick with uh, Navrocki and Scales. And then again, your question on the left back, obviously getting taken off as a left back at the weekend is not, not really what you're looking for. But again, unless you're going to bring Ralston in, I think he's going to stick with Burnaby. Okay. The midfield picks itself, McGregor, O'Reilly, Bernardo. And then I think it goes with Kuhn on form for the weekend, who got his goal there. Uh, I think Maya, uh, sorry, Maida has to come back in. He's such a big player for Celtic over the last couple of years. He brings, right. brings energy that other people don't really have. And then I think he sticks with Kyogo. I know he duck him on, done well, and I'm sure we want to get him minutes in this game or start him soon, but I think he sticks with Kyogo for Easter Road. What do you think, Regan? Yeah, Paul, I think that Celtic will go with that team. I think Palmer will play. Um, I think John's right there because I think Palmer, as much as he's been wasteful, he, um, he often tries to beat a man, which I think will probably have him over. Uh, Nicholas, I know Nicholas, uh, he came on the game on Saturday and he did, yeah. okay. he did okay scored his goal but I think Brendan will bide his time man. Um, here's what the manager said after the game at the weekend about the two new signings yeah, very much so I, I think it's over the course of the, this next period that, and I said it before I think both players can affect the short medium and longer term uh, capacity of the team and I think we see that Adam I'm really excited about Having, like I said before, having seen him play and now seeing him for a few days, working with him and speaking with him, the ability that he has, it's, it's, it's incredible, really. He has every tool that you want to play at the very highest level. And uh, clearly he's obviously doing that internationally and, and it's been a wee bit hit and miss for him at, his, at Norwich, but... Um, but when I assess him and we see him in training and we see the finish and we see the speed, we see the touch, he, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about what he can bring us over these next um, remaining months. And Nicholas is just settling in now, time, gets his first goal, uh, which is great. That'll be good for his confidence and he will only get better. John, what's the team you would play? You gave us what you think the manager will play, but what would you do tonight? I think Kuhn. Uh, should play instead of Palmer, mm. in my opinion. And um, I don't think um, I don't I don't think that um, Nicholas, um, not Nicholas, um, Ida, Ida yeah. comes into the team yeah. um, too soon. Maybe. Well, I think Kyogo. So yeah. I know he's only mm. got eight league goals this season. When you think moyovsky has got twenty yeah. Yeah. Um, in total, mm. you know, it's, yeah. it's he's way behind in terms of his numbers or what he is, but. He's one of those players that you've got to you've got to play to him. You got you got to put balls down the side. You have got to balls whipping across that six yard box, and he can make his runs. He's a wonderful finisher when he gets an opportunity. But he's been, he's been very quiet. He's been you know he's been not himself, has he, in the last yeah. few weeks? But um, no, you know, in terms of anything else, I think Burnaby might play instead of Ralston. But I would give Ralston a go if yeah. you if you drag a player off one weekend, then. You got to bring another player in. That tells you you're not playing well. That's it's a not, great point. You're not playing very well. So yeah. I'm going to change the team yeah. until you can start picking up your performances mm. again, Jamie. Yeah, especially as a defender. If you get taken yeah. off as a defender when you're 
when you're trying to defend the league that's it's not it's not really a good sign uh, and you know Ralston's played right back played left back done well uh, does a job for Celtic you're not saying he's going to go on and be a world beater but you know as a Celtic player he's done great uh, so I'd be inclined to, to give him a chance at left back Let's hear a bit more from the manager because the club it's uh, everyone's been talking about the fans there's a disconnect at the moment what's the manager saying about the, the pressure? Always, I think the expectation is one of the the, the huge things here at Celtic, whether you're players or manager, um, the stronger leagues out there in Europe. But when you play and, and manage Celtic, it's a real test of your mental fortitude as a as a person, dealing with expectation, dealing with pressure, uh, and dealing with everything that comes with it. Like there's, there's not too many teams around Europe where you'll have four points out of six and it, it's crisis mode again you know so um, but I always think that w w when when it can feel like that there that's the, those are, that's the catalyst really where you can continually improve I've, I've been around long enough I understand the, the nature of how it works here but my focus is really with the team and, and making sure that we can continually improve and like I said if we if we score a couple of goals that we should have done in the first half, then the game looks totally different. But we've had that a number of times this season where we haven't quite made the breakthrough after making good starts and having pressure. And then you bring a little anxiety into your, into your game and not quite get the finish you want. So, um, so yeah, so it's learning from that and, uh, and dealing with it. But that's all part of, of working here. Regan, what do you think is going to happen tonight? One to Celtic, Paul. Um, the only thing that's really, that's really worrying me is, is Brendan Rodgers has no one at Easter Road. At Easter Road before, um, see in terms of Jamie and uh, John, mm. see you guys, but you soon you played somewhere and you've never won. Does that, did, did that play on your mind? Or is that just me uh, and not being able to play? Uh, thinking about that, or, or does it general play? Uh, no, that's, play, a, that's a great question. Yeah, I mean. Truth is, you do a little bit, yeah. yeah. Usually it's in the programme or someone will have said, oh, you've not won here in the last 10 games and then it becomes a thought. But, you know, Celtic are good enough and should be good enough yeah. to win the game tonight. It, it, it shouldn't really come into their minds. But, you know, there's always, as much as people look confident and, you know, they're big teams, there's still a little bit in, in players' minds that, you know, maybe we could lose this game, maybe we might not play so well. So they've got to get rid of that and and put that to the back of their heads and go out and win the game. I think if Celtic play well, Reagan, and they need to play well, you know, they, they really need to play well. There's been several times this season where they haven't played well, and we've got to be honest about it. We can't just, yeah. you know, paper over the cracks all the time. You know, we, we should have won. It was a massive game at Aberdeen at the weekend, right, because we knew Rangers. We had a great feeling that they would beat Livingston. We failed to win. Right, we've gone up out of the cup. We've had two dismal appearances against um, abysmal, should I say, against Kilmarnock in the League Cup and in the league. We lost at home to Hearts, where we weren't very good. You know, we drew with Motherwell. We drew with him. I think Celtic have lost. Tw I think they, they've um, they've twelve. They've dropped twelve points this season. Now, Brendan is a very, very experienced manager. You know, and, and this is where, why we may rue. I don't want to go on about the window all the time because mm. it's gone. But this is why that, you know, we almost thought that the way Celtic were playing and the way Rangers were on this run, Regan, that this yep. might happen. They might claw back this points deficit that Celtic had against them. But Rangers, of course, always had the two games in hand. And this is why we might rue not strengthening with another two or three players in the window it might well cost Celtic. And people say, oh, really? well, people say, Regan, this is a big game. Saturday was a big game. The Hearts game was a big game. You, you've, got, you've got to take every game. You've got to win every game. And, and you've got to take your chances. Brendan said there, there's been two or three times where we might have scored a couple of goals. But we never. We never did. And we dropped points. So hopefully yeah. tonight we'll get the opportunities and Celtic will start scoring goals and, and and start you know playing the way that we know they can play. And Brendan is a very experienced manager. He knows that more than anybody. 
Regan, thanks very much for calling the Go Radio Football Show. Gregory's been on, a Celtic fan as well. His team is Hart. He's going AJ Welsh. He's putting in the back four Scales and Ralston. John, so he's got Ralston, Ralston. same as you. Yep. O'Reilly, McGregor, Bernardo. And up front, he's got Kyogo with Kuhn on the right and Maeda on the left. So quite a lot of Celtic fans looking for change tonight. Yeah, I don't think you play Kyogo on, on the right. No, no, he's got him through the centre. He's got Kuhn, Nicholas Kuhn on the right and Maeda on the left. And Kyogo down the middle. Down the middle, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I was... Well, I don't think, yeah. I don't, I don't think Rodgers goes out after not winning the game and play the exact same team. So I'm expecting sure. a couple of changes in there. What they might be, I'm not sure. Jamie Murphy, you played at Rangers, you played all over the place. Celtic won the treble, as you know, last season, the double the year before. What do you see that's missing this year? I mean, one of them would be Jota, who left for 25 million and uh, into Saudi. What do you think when you watch Celtic? It's just a bit of intensity, you know, but I think that's just the way Postacoglu had his teams playing. You watch Tottenham at the start of this season when they had all their players fit. They bring a real intensity about it. They go at teams. They, they don't give teams a lot of time to think. You know, playing against his teams was, was really difficult as a player. You, know, yeah. you had people moving in places that you, you didn't think of. Obviously, me being a winger and following a fullback that's running into a number 10 position. I mean, these are things that you've maybe never seen before. So, like we said earlier, it's difficult for a new manager to come in and change from that style of play to the one he wants. Now, they're, they're doing all right, but I think that's Celtic fans' problem at the minute. They're winning games, but they're winning games with average performances. They're not going out and they're not scoring two, three, four goals and, and winning as they maybe should be. And, you know, sometimes... Playing for the old farm, that's that's not enough. It's not enough to scrape a one 0 win. You know, Brendan always talks about mentality and, and this season that the mentality hasn't been with the players too often. They've dropped far too many points. I said it a couple of weeks ago. There's some Celtic players, in my opinion, that think they're better than what they are. Mm. I think you can question some of their performances. Um you know, you look at the recruitment at the start of the season, three or four players. More wingers not done it, not 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 achieved. Not you can't say they've had pass marks really. Um, and as I said, you could almost say they haven't been good enough mm. this season. Paul, as a team, as a group of players, they haven't been good enough because they work really hard. They beat they beat Rangers twice, um, but and that then, takes a bit of doing, doesn't well, it? Yeah, but yeah. there's no point beating Rangers sure. twice and then losing at home and not winning games. Of, sure. course, of course, yeah. you know. But um, for me. Yeah. There's certainly questions to be asked about Celtic. I think they'll go and win tonight. I just thought if they if they go and win tonight, then they go they go and have, have the mentality to go and win in the Scottish Cup against St Mirren on Saturday, and they can finish the season really really strong because you know what they have to because Rangers fancy it this season. For sure. What I you think you're always Sorry, learning. What you I think uh, in every game in every situation you you're learning about your players, um, but of course. Under pressure is uh, is where you will you will learn more, you know. Um, you look at that courage and that bravery to play, and, and like I said, I, I I don't doubt that we with this team and listen, we, we we've had players out and players missing, but we've still done enough to to win games that we've drawn in. Um, so we go into that with a fresh approach tomorrow and and look to you know we've analysed the last game and where we can be better, and then we. We look forward to that, not dwell on the mistakes that we make in the game, but look forward to the, the future and you know playing against a good team and, and hopefully we can put in a good performance. Jimmy? Sorry, what I was going to say was it's going to come down to later on in the season, but the two old firm games that are, that are left, they're, they're now huge, huge games. You know, If Rangers really want to go out there and win the title, they've got to be beaten. Celtic at Ibrox. And... On the other hand, Celtic have got to be going there thinking if we win this game, it puts a right dent in their hopes. And then we've got the game at Parkhead still to go. So, you know, we're always looking for big games in Scotland. I don't think they're going to get any bigger than they do. And that is the question for Rangers. Can you beat Celtic when it counts? Yeah, and to win the league, you're going to have to do that. Yeah, but they could lose the next two to Celtic and still win the league. Yeah. Sure. If Celtic, point, if Celtic drop yeah. points or if Rangers sure. drop points... Yeah. You know, that that you've got to go and win these games tonight. You've got to go to Aberdeen yeah. and win at a difficult venue. Hearts, 
And of course, yes, Celtic have done that. But this season, you know, for me, mm. they've been far, far off their best mm. in terms of the, the, the football that they play. Because at the start of the season, I think you and Barry Ferguson both thought, look, Celtic will win all the games and then see what, most of the games, see what happens against Rangers. Mm. And Barry felt the same for Rangers. Rangers would win, especially when Philippe Clement came in and they got a momentum that they would win the games and it would come down to the old firm. But that doesn't look as though that's going to be the case. But who knows? Yeah. It's uh, level Long pegging. Yeah. Yeah. We're just... going to have the team news soon. 0808 17 17 700. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. Thanks for all your calls tonight, your uh, emails, your WhatsApps. A lot of people want to speak and make the points to John Harson. And Jamie Murphy, who joins us for the first time. We got to your career at Rangers, and injury was the problem, wasn't it, Jamie? We just didn't see enough of you. Was it Cruciate? Yeah, it was ACL and a couple, yeah. of, a couple of other surgeries after that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was disappointing to, to get to that point in mm. my career where I was playing for Rangers, but, you know, I don't regret anything. These things happen. Uh, I got to 28, 29 before having any serious injury, so... Yeah, I'm thankful for the, the career that I've I've had and, and still have. You certainly have. It's phenomenal. And two Scotland caps as well. That must be so special. What was it like then, your first cap for Scotland when you were called up? I know you'd been in the squad and then when you finally played, what was it like putting on the dark blue? Yeah, it was a dream come true. I know, I'm pretty sure every Scottish boy says that. Uh, remember from that game, I'd actually broke my toe uh, the week before against St. Johnson. So Rangers weren't too happy that I wanted yeah. to be in the squad, but you know, you never know how many times these things come up, come across and you've got to take that chance when it comes. And Sure enough, a couple of months later, I end up getting a knee injury and I haven't been called up since for obvious reasons. So, yeah, it was good, it was good to get a couple of caps while I could. But you've got your caps and it's so special, John. I know you love your the, the, what you did with Wales. You were down at the rugby at the weekend. You had a good time. Yeah. My goodness. First half, Scotland amazing. Yeah, Second half, I mean, the, the fingernails were... Uh, what was Scotland it, 27-26? Scotland were absolutely... Yeah. They blew Wales away in the first yeah. half. And I'm, I'm, I'm in the box. I'm saying to my mate, this, this could be 50. This could be really? embarrassing. Yeah. Scotland were that good. Wales lost eight line-outs in good position so they couldn't capitalise second half they had a really right go towards the end but just couldn't Scotland held out so credit they deserve to win Thank you John let's go back in the lines Paul's on a Rangers fan good evening Paul uh, Evening Paul Evening guys thanks for that Hi Paul, Hi, Paul. Paul. How much did you enjoy last night? Oh listen that took me back to it was an incredible atmosphere I, every, every moment was excellent apart from that 10 seconds at the end of that that free kick, my heart was in my mouth. But um, I suppose when, when I reflected on it, when I went back home, I was saying to my mate on the way back home, I said, you know, it's the only feeling I had for Ibrox and as a Rangers fan, to be honest with you, that we've went through a huge number of matches since Walter Smith. And I felt that that's the first time that when we went one each, I was gutted and disappointed because I wanted to keep banging the goals in. But I wasn't feeling really... Nervous as such, it's the only way I can kind of describe it. Now, under Gerard, when we won 55 titles and whatnot, ah, you could probably say, well, you kind of feel like that as well, but it's a different feeling about Rangers now, and I think it is down to one guy, and, and I think, I've said in the show before, I think this is the first proper Rangers manager, experienced guy, track record, proven over in Belgium, Monaco, blah, blah, blah. He's not a project manager, he's not a Graham Murray, he's not a Pedro Cassini. And, and I put Gerard in that bracket as well. Gerard is the profile, the respected players, but he was never a manager. Um, and I actually think now, and I don't know what John thinks, but on Jamie, Brendan Rodgers has now got a proper challenge. And I'm not in here to slate Brendan Rodgers, I'm just giving my factual opinion, right? Mm -hmm. We've had managers in the past at Michael Beale who would say things too much yeah. to the media, in my opinion, right? Yeah. And that's an experience. Brendan Rodgers surprises me a wee bit, right? He said a few things this season from Rangers. I've heard Rangers are coming. Um, I've seen all five managers. I'll see you back here. For those that doubt me, I'll see you back here in May. Now, oh, that's right. You've got to be in your bonnet about that one, Paul. You've had that since no, the start no, no, of the no, season. No, 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 you have. No, I don't know why, Paul. No, yeah, I don't know why, tell me. Paul. And I've talked to Celtic fans about this, but my mates are Celtic fans. Yeah. There's two things I'm thinking about. I want to get John's opinion on it, and I'm not trying to... Okay, go for it. Yeah. Is it... Is it down to because he's came back a second time that, that the, the fans are a bit divided and that's his way of bringing fans back on side or 
is he feeling the pressure to club on? And it's a genuine question because okay. I'm surprised he's, he's, he's an experienced manager. Why is he saying all these comments? Because he never did it the first time. Yeah, what I would say to that is, Paul, we listened to Philippe Clement earlier, and I think he's doing a brilliant job. Rangers are in, in the ascendancy, they've clawed the gap back, and the title race is absolutely back on. You know, Rangers probably with a bit of momentum, they've been on a great run. But I have to say, Brendan Rodgers won a, won a back-to-back treble the last time he was here. So, you know, that that's no mean feat. And this season, he has. You're absolutely right, and Brendan will know it. He'll know that he's in the title race. He'll know that Rangers are ever so well to claw back. But the reason that you are doing that is because you're currently in better form than Celtic. You're basically playing better than Celtic are. In in you know in the last couple of weeks they've they've drawn at, at Aberdeen, they've lost at home to Hearts, they drew at home to Motherwell, they lost the last time out. At, sorry, they drew at, at away at Hibs. Yeah. This fixture at the start of the season. That's the reason why Rangers. Are in, are in a bit of a m- momentum. And if I'm not mistaken, Paul, right, um, Clement said earlier on, on the little clip that we had, he wants Rangers to win everything. He wants Rangers, he thinks they can win everything, the league, they've already won the League, the league Cup, um, and also the Scottish Cup. So if that's absolutely fine. If he believes that, yeah. I think he's given the players a little bit of a boost. If the manager got, thinks it, got, if the manager yeah. thinks it, Paul... Then obviously the players would think it, do you know? But, but John, see, see you, you played under big name managers, and one that mm-hmm. pops to mind, Martin O'Neill. I remember when Martin O'Neill came up in the early 2000s, he said the bench marks Rangers. Mm-hmm. Am I right in saying that? He said that Absolutely, mate. He, but, never, but, he but, never came out. You, you that, were, that you that. were though. Ah, he's not, but mm. what I'm saying is that there was that mutual respect. Walter Smith, Martin O'Neill, people like that, kind of style of management, I suppose. Mm. Never said, Walter Smith, never, unless I'm wrong, Paul, you, you've been a media yeah. reporter for a long time. I never really seen him come out and he would never say things like, one thing that stuck in my mind with Michael Beale, he came out after the PSV game and he said, we don't get that type of uh, mm. team in the domestic league. And yeah, I thought, sure. what does that say about all sure. the other teams? I'm, I'm just not sure what your gripe is about Brendan Rodgers, though, because I think he's respectful, quite rightly, about Rangers. Let's get Jamie's opinion on it. Honestly, Paul, I'm not quite sure. You make loads of good points. I've heard you saying this a few times. I think it was when oh, he arrived right. back and he was there and he must have said something about come back in May. But Celtic fans would expect him to say, well, we'll see you at the end of the season. Jamie, what do you feel about Brendan Rodgers' attitude to Rangers? I think he's just confident in himself and his team. I mean, and that's all right. Like yeah. As a person, I think that's just how he is. He's going to say anything he can to give himself an advantage, which is probably what he's trying. Mm. But, you know, like you said, you know, Clement, I know he said about Rangers managers over the last couple of years, haven't been at, at the level and whatever, but what Clement does bring, and it seems to be like, you know, that fear factor that maybe they haven't had since yeah. Walter Smith mm-hmm. right? even when he's doing an interview you think he's going to sh- he's going to start shouting at somebody <laughs> you know? yeah. he's a bit yeah. scary to look at yeah. and stuff so I think when, you're, when you've got that as a manager it's a, yeah. it's a real advantage don't, don't quote me on this Paul right but hasn't Clement said them a couple of times meaning Celtic this season I'm not quite I don't sure know, I'm not sure I, no. I can't really be but bothered listen, down it, that if, line but Paul if it's you tit know, for tat yeah. players I don't do think this going on. If, if, if Clement wants to say we think we can win the treble we you know we, we believe we're going to do this we think we're going to do that well, he's been paid to do but, it but to try and win it of course exactly yeah. people, people say things yeah. do you know what I mean but what it is if people say things mm. then I remember Graham Asunas when he came to Celtic Park in the UEFA Cup he said this men against boys. Blackburn. We went down to right. Blackburn and played them off the park. At the end of the day, people say things, Paul. I've said I've things and I've had egg on my face. You've yeah. said things. But listen, that's what the world is about. That's what football is about. This, you, you're sure. trying to say Brendan's been a bit disrespectful with his oh, comments. There's, there's wee quips. Wee mm. quips about Far. Look, uh, oh, I know Far had to do his job because someone was offside. That, mm-hmm. that, was, a, that was a failed dig, right? At that, mm-hmm. that whole thing. And listen, Paul, I agree with yeah. you. I don't like any individual being yeah. put in under that scope. That, 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 that's a fair comment. I 100% yeah. get that. But I've got no, no vendetta against Brendan Rodgers. Look, he's won titles. You quite rightly said, John, mm. he's won back-to-back uh, trebles. You can't take that away. Well, well, Paul, the one, thing, the one thing I'd say, mate, the title race is on. You've oh, now yeah. got a title race, yeah. pal. You've been one yeah. loss. Oh. You won yeah. loss in 18... You know, the key is now for Rangers with the form 
Can they kick on? Can they stay at the top of the league? Yeah. Let's talk about uh, Cantwell. I want to ask you about him, Paul. Here's your manager speaking about him after his winning goal last no, night. I, I see him growing because he's doing much more what's necessary for the team. And he starts to understand much better the story. And he feels also that it's to his benefit. But that's not the most important thing, that it's to the benefit of the team. And he needs to continue in that way, to, to work for the team to do the things for the team and then the individual things come also like the goals or assist. But it's not only for Tot, it's, it's for everybody all together. I think uh, people saw really good combination play today uh, with really good actions, uh, not only with offensive players but all the team involved in our attack. So that's the football we, we want to, to bring the next couple of months and, and, and to grow with that also because we still have a lot of room for progression to, to make it better. What do you make of Cantwell? Can I ask you first, Jamie? I thought it was excellent last night, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. playing in that number 10 position, mm -hmm. which, I think, which I think is his position, yeah. you know, they've tried him out right and, and whatever, but I think as a number 10, he, he's one of the best players in Scotland when he's on form, so he made a difference last night, obviously getting the goal, but out with the goal, I, th I thought it was excellent at getting the ball, you know, taking the ball in these tight spaces and and bringing other people into the game. I think it's really helped him how McCausland's came through as well and took up that right-hand side position that's let him come inside. So you were, you were a bit unsure at the start whether Clement fancied him or not, yeah. but uh, since then he, he, he's been excellent. I'll tell you, Paul, your manager has rotated the squad really well. You can never be sure. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Dezers, it's going to be Silva, who's in. Or, you know, he does keep you guessing, doesn't he? Oh, listen, me and my mate were talking about it in the way in, but both thought Silva would start and heard Dessers yeah. and me, oh jeez, but mm -hmm. you know what, I, I go back to that whole thing, I trust I trust Clement, yeah. I think, yeah. I'm getting more options, so I would be a wee bit, I feel like I'm a negative person tonight, right, right? Mm -hmm. but if I was one wee thing about Cantwell, I don't know what you guys think, but to me, it can try and score the perfect goal, I go back to the Kilmarnock game, he just had this swipe it in the net, one time he tried to score the, a worldie, mm -hmm. um, one wee thing, I just think he's got that wee bit of showmanship, right, and I'll be honest, I, I would quite like, I don't know guys think, I, I think um, Lawrence is playing out of position. He's, he's not, unless I'm wrong, I don't think he's a defensive sitting midfielder, he's more attacking. Yeah. And I would like Lawrence to maybe get a wee bit of a shot in the, the number 10. I'll tell you why. If you remember the first goal came up with Matondo, uh, Cadmel's goal, sorry. Yeah. It came it's from just, Lawrence's shot did, outside the box. It was a great shot. Can you think yeah. of Rangers? Yeah. We've had Alberts from Bronckhorst, <laughs> Pedro Mendes. Over the years, we've scored cracking goals outside the box. Yeah. I was talking to a guy in the stand next to me last night and I said, why can we not strike shots outside the box and then, lo and behold, a pile driver from um, Lawrence leads to the goal. So yeah. I'd like more of that. We just try and find these wee one-two touches inside the box to break down mm -hmm. defences when, in fact, why not take a gamble and shoot outside the box? What, what, what yeah, do you John? think of that? Yeah, I like Cantwell. Yeah. I think he plays in a position where he can go and affect the game. I, I prefer him going forward. I think he looks to play one-twos off the front men and and follow his pass and things like this. I did say last week, I, I think he needs to stay on his feet a bit more. I think we have seen instances, you know, this season where he goes down a little bit too easy. There's another word for it, but I'll just stay, you know, respectful. But as I said, he's got talent. There's no doubt about it. And as Philippe Clement says, the longer that he's at Rangers, he's settling in, his performances are getting better. And I think there's a player in there, I really do. Jamie, is it, you're going to change it all for the Rangers fans who are happy just now, like Paul, because you're a United come to Ibrox in the Cup. Yeah, we talk about the Cup and the romance and the slip-ups and the surprises. Could there be one? Will there be one on Saturday? We'll certainly be trying. And I mean, that's the way we're going to go into the game. You know, so is it going to be difficult? Yes. Are Rangers the favourites? Yes. But, you know, sometimes that's the, the magic of the Cup, as they say. And what's life like under Scott Brown? Has he made many changes? Because Lee Bullen, really highly respected, did so well last season. It's just tougher this time round. But a new manager in, I suppose it's uh, changing of the guard. Yeah, you know, things change when a new manager comes in, whether you like them or not. But, you know, the manager's came in. He's, he's done some really good things. He demands a lot of players, which is, is good. Uh, you know, there's nobody... Uh, falling out of training yeah. or doing that. Everyone's training to their maximum, which is... A must. So, uh, you know, I'm sure he's looking forward to it as well. Yeah. Come Saturday. I think. I think yeah. United looking for a bit of stability, Paul. I think mm -hmm. in the last couple of years, you mentioned Lee Bullen, David yeah. Opkin was there, um, Jim yeah. Duffy as well was there for a while. Come back. Yeah. So I think Scott's got a three-year contract, mm -hmm. and 
and as a manager, he knows he's got that little bit of time. Of course, results, results, you know, dependent as well. Yeah. You can't go losing five, six, seven games now. You know, you're out of a job. Sure. But I think what Scott and um, is it Stephen Whitaker is with him. I think they they look to give the club a bit, you know, a bit right. of stability. Good double act there. Yeah, but, yeah, they've been great training yeah. wise and stuff so far. You can tell, obviously, played at a high level. They sure. know what they're talking about. What I will say is behind the scenes at the club, there's some some great staff. The chairman's really helpful. Uh, Graham Matthew, the managing director, is, is excellent as well. As well as you know, you get people at a football club. You know, yeah, you your people that make the food. Yeah, Lynn, Lynn mm -hmm. the, the lady that makes the food, and mm -hmm. Lisa, the cleaner, who's always in there making everybody laugh. You know, you, you kept man George. I'm sure I've missed a couple, but you know, these real people behind the scenes that is yeah. like fans might not know, but they're the ones that you speak to every day. They're the ones that can lift the mood after a defeat, going in and having a chat with them and stuff. So. And I see it's in profit as well. Two million it turnover, yeah. £20,000 profit. That's in the news today. So it is really, it's good yeah. news. Paul, what's going to happen though on Saturday? Is it 5.30 kickoff? What do you reckon? Oh, sorry, Jamie. I don't know you <laughs> want to come and do well, but it's going to be a six or seven. Nah, listen, hmm. um, I hope I hope a couple of young guys get a run out. I'd like to see um, Austin, uh, the, the new guys were brought in, Dio Monday and... Um, so I'll get a wee run out and um, yeah. you know, maybe some of the youth coming out and that's no disrespect to our United obviously sure. okay. we're a certain person being in charge we want to make sure we, we rub our noses in it but, uh, he's, he's, got, he's got a great record at Ibrox by the way hasn't he Scott he certainly has right we're going to move on Paul thanks so <laughs> much Paul. thanks for the call yes, Paul. Uh, and so other good news Queen's Park are going to share the love in Valentine's Day it's going to be free tickets for school children to come along to the game uh, at Hampden with Morton. So February the 17th, just a couple of days after Valentine's. It's a good move there. It's great to see initiatives in the game. Quick break and then team news is next. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Start a new career as an estate agent. Call 0141 374 Let's go! This time tomorrow night, Andy Walker will be here along with Leanne Crichton. Tonight is Jimmy Murphy of Air United, the former Scotland star, Rangers, Brighton, Hove Albion, Sheffield United, Motherwell, St Mirren, Hibs, many others, and the one and only John Hartson. Celtic team should be out any moment now. We will bring it to you. In fact, uh, yeah, Kuhn starts. Palma has been dropped. It's uh, dropping just as we speak for the big game tonight. Here's Celtic starting 11 for the game at Easter Road. Hart. Johnson, Welsh, Scales and Burnaby, McGregor, O'Reilly, Bernardo, Nicholas Kuhn on the right, Maeda through the middle and Ida. So that's the Celtic lineup. John Harson. I'm quite happy yeah. with that, Paul. I think I think Brendan's gone brave um, in terms of you know giving Kuhn and Ida a start. Um, Maeda's back as well. I kept the same back four, and obviously as. Um, as Jamie yeah. said earlier, the, the, the midfield uh, stays exactly the same. McGregor, O'Reilly and Bernie uh, Bernardo. Yeah. So um, it's a strong team. And obviously one or two players have an opportunity to go and shine tonight. On the bench, Bain, Palma, Kyogo, player of the year last season. Abada, Holm, Navroski, who started at the weekend. Vata, Kelly and Ralston. Jamie Murphy, it's quite a few headlines in there, the changes. Yeah, I think obviously the big one, Kyogo not playing mm -hmm. and bringing Ida in. Uh, you know he just hasn't quite hit the heights of last year but like you've seen in the old farm game I mean, he's capable of scoring a goal at any minute so I'm sure he'll be ready to go if he gets a chance Here's the Hibs lineup. it's Marshall of course in goals Miller, Fish, Levitt and Yuan Venta and Boyle Boyle's back of course Newell, Obita, Triantis and Maria Welsh up front so that's the Hibs line up a lot of fans on saying what about this uh, it's a chance for Adam Ida came in on loan yep. just at the end of the transfer window um, Norwich uh, loads of promise John but he wanted to be playing regularly and you liked him at the weekend what you saw of him yeah, yeah. and I, I just feel that um, Brendan Rodgers the way he praised him earlier on in training he says yeah. he's got every single asset that you'd want in, in the centre forward strong quick uh, in training he's been absolutely magnificent I think sometimes it's totally different by the way in training as you play yeah. uh, it's just taking that you know that form and those good performances off on the training ground onto the pitch um, Kuhn as well gets an opportunity yeah. out wide so for me um, yeah there's a couple of surprises in there but yeah. you just hope that they can hit the ground running and 
and that Ada, you know, can get on the score sheet because he's took a little bit of um, he's took a little bit of uh, bad press. You know, the fans are not quite sure about him. Chris Sutton said he wasn't doing great at Norwich, and you know, a bit surprised by the decision. But all Ada can do is come up here and and score goals, and then just just obviously prove prove people wrong. Jamie, for your old team, Lewis Miller's back from the cup as well and I know he had a difficult last game and he's been difficult for him on social media but uh, Boyle back as well is a boost for Hibs they've missed both of them haven't they yeah yeah, you can see that over the last couple of results mm. you know especially Martin Boyle he's been their, yeah. their talisman over the last couple of years where if you need a goal usually you get Martin to step up and, uh, and and take hold of things so they'll definitely be looking for him with his pace maybe on the counter attack against a Celtic team that's probably going to have most of the ball so uh, you'd be looking to get him in behind and, and cause him problems. Come back to that game in a moment to do get your final verdicts. Uh, the Killy team, here it is for tonight. Dennis and Goals, Mayo, Wright, Finlay and Davies, Armstrong and Watson, Donnelly, Stewart, Watkins and Vassell. So Kilmarnock will be looking to continue the good run that they've been on for the game against Livy, who had a tough one at the weekend. I mean, they held out for 40 minutes, as you know, against Rangers. So Livy, uh, Shamal George, of course, in goals, Donnellan, Carson, Opelion, Pittman, Mackay, Brandon, Brantley, Holt, the captain, Nottingham and Yenge. What's your scoreline? What do you reckon tonight for that one, Jamie? I think Kamala, if they're, they're looking to cement their place in the top six, they've got to be winning that game. You know, a couple of good signings in Stuart and Van Veen. Yeah. So I think you're maybe looking at uh, 3 0 Kamala. What do you reckon, John? Kelly Livy? Yeah, I think yeah. Kilmarnock will win. They're, they're going well, Kilmarnock, and they. Uh, Livingston can't buy a win at yeah. the minute. Mm. I think David Martin is trying a bit of everything, isn't he? Um, so I, I think Kilmarnock will win pretty comfortable. I'll go for 3 0. Shall we go to St Mirren, who, what a result for them at the weekend against Hebs. They're up against Dundee, who have shown some great form. Right, St Mirren are lining up Hemming, Bolton, Gogic, who scored at the weekend, Fraser the captain, and Buomono. Kwan, of course, on loan from Celtic. Boyd Munz, Tanzer, Kilty, who scored as well, Mandron and Scott up against uh, the Dundee team, which is Carson, Dodgson, Shaughnessy, the captain, McGee, Curtis Main returning, of course, to the new Love Street, the Smizer. Cameron, Ashcroft, McCowan, Boateng, Mellon and Beck. So, who, of course, on loan from Liverpool. John, what do you reckon? I think it's a good game there. Well, I said Dundee would yeah. get something at Aberdeen, yep. didn't they, a couple of weeks ago? Was it 1-1 they got? Yep. And I think the same tonight. I think right. Dundee will get something at St Mirren. So, again, I'll go for a 1-1. That was Barry Robson time, which, of course, it's Neil Warnock now. So, you're going for a 1-1? Yeah. What do you feel, Jamie Murphy? I think Dundee have been the surprise of the season, really. Mm -hmm. You know, coming up and losing a lot of players, changing manager, you thought maybe they'd be down there, but they've done excellent. But I think if you're Samaran, you want to create a bigger gap between yourself and them. I think you've got to be looking to win that game at home. So I'll, I'll go for 2-1 Samaran. I was in, right, OK, so I went for the Saints. In Dundee this morning, John... Beautiful morning, the silver of discovery. It was, it is, isn't it? That's yeah. all a discovery. But it was looking good, Dundee, and they are buzzing, and they want Dundee United back in the top flight. We'll talk about that maybe later in the week. Mm -hmm. Shall we go St. Johnson against Hearts? Quick word then for this game. So Craig Levine up against uh, the team that he managed for so long. And was yes, yes, that's right, yeah. So it's Mitoff, Gallagher, Considine, McGowan, Carey, Kucharavi, Olufwanya, Robinson, Kimpioka, who scored at the weekend, Franzak, and Smith up against Hearts third top almost nailed on for them isn't it they are flying uh, here's the Hearts line up Clark Kent Kingsley Beningamy Newnoff Shankland the captain and score a double at the weekend Forrest the player of the month Alan Forrest Cochrane Fraser Vargas and Limbasica what do you think Jamie, what do you reckon on this one? And well done, Alan Forrest, Player of the Month. Yeah. Was there no Shankland in there? Yes, he Shankland is in there. Yeah, Shank so they give you in a different order, the, the hearts. Yeah, I thought that as well. You no, Shankland is in end, there. Don't you? No, he's there. They just give you... In, they make it more difficult for the uh, commentators and for the opposition. <laughs> what do you reckon? I, I think it'll be a difficult game for hearts. Uh, Kim Pioca, who scored the goal at the weekend for St. Johnson, mm -hmm. looks like he could be a really good signing. Good goal. Uh, but I, I don't think you can look past a team with Shankland in it mm. at the minute. The way he's, he's playing two goals at the weekend and an assist as well. Uh, it'll be a difficult game, but I think I'll go for 1-0 Hearts. 
And should he have gone? Should Rangers have gone for him? Barry Ferguson thinks that they should have got somebody. No, I don't yeah. think January is the time he was spending okay. a lot of money, but I think they'll maybe look at that again in the summer. In the summer, John, what do you reckon at Perth tonight? I think it's a good game for Craig Levine. You know, he'd have spent so many good years, wouldn't he? Both as a player and a manager at, at Hearts. Um, it's always it's always a difficult one when the yeah. the former manager has come up against his old team, uh, his old club. Um, should I say so? I think Hearts will will win this, and I think Shankland again. The way he's playing, the form that he's in, I wouldn't be surprised if he got himself a goal or a couple of goals again tonight. So I'm going to go Hearts 3-1. Um, 3-1, three one. Three one, you reckon? 8 o'clock kickoff. it's on Sky, it's live. Hibs against Celtic, Celtic still defending champions <coughs> at the top of the table. There's only one goal in it with Rangers. Here's Brendan Rodgers looking at tonight's opposition. Well, Hibs are one of the, the top teams. It's maybe just me. It's maybe just, I think it's been okay for other managers, I think. So, but, uh, yeah, listen, we've been in good positions there. I think at the last game we were there, we, we, we should win the game, but we started the first 60 minutes way too slow. The speed of a game, tempo of the game is too slow. Uh, and then the last 25 minutes we come alive and the speed of the game was, was much better. And, um, and then we learned that we take that into the last game when we played at home. So I think that's, that, that's key for us. But we, um, we have to bring our game to the uh, the football match, and if we can do that, then we can uh, hopefully have a good evening. John Harson, you broke the Celtic team just a few moments ago. Key night for well everyone in that team, and you've made the point this evening. Every game is important. Who are you looking to to unlock magic? Could I throw O'Reilly at you? Maybe quieter at the weekend. Yeah, possibly. O'Reilly is always a threat, isn't he? he? Likes to get in the opposition box. He's got ten goals already this season from midfield, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, Adar, I'd like to see him break his duck tonight and get his first goal. Kuhn, be interesting again. I'm looking at these new sign ins and just obviously, I know it's very early, they, they all need a little bit of time, but just to see how Kuhn is, is sort of developing in the team. And of course, Maeda is, mm -hmm. is back. You know what you'll get from the midfield. You know, he's so consistent, Callum McGregor. You absolutely know what, what he gives you every single week. Um, so yeah, for me, I'd love to see um, Adar score his own goal, uh, so, score his first goal. Yeah, and I think Celtic will win. I think Celtic will win two 0 You reckon two 0 Two 0 for Celtic. Yes, Jamie. Um, I guess Hibs will be saying, and um, they're always really open. That's one of the problems. As the breaking news, Derek, Derek, breaking news, Derek Adams has gone. He's out at um, Ross County. So that's just the breaking he news. Didn't, he after. didn't seem confident in his interview after the game. Last he didn't, time, did, did he? Yeah, we've had no time to go into that, but it was, it was strange after. It's been tough for him, um, yeah. but he's out. So that's just breaking news. Thanks, James, for that. Hibs, are they going to try and target the fact that Scales and Welsh haven't played together too much this season? I think they'll be looking to, yeah. uh, and that's up to Celtic to, to make sure that doesn't happen and Celtic to defend a bit better than maybe they did at the weekend. Uh, but... Like we said, I, I, I can't see Celtic not winning that game. It'd be perfect for them for their new signings to come in and, and do well and, and, and put a real marker down and show that show to Rangers that this isn't just a, all going to be all your way. So uh, I'll, I'll go for 3-1 three, one, three, one Celtic. You reckon 3-1. And what about Callum McGregor? You've played against him, so he has been an outstanding player. Brendan Rodgers said after the Rangers game he's in a different level from other players. He's been excellent for a long time. I mean, you know, you, you talk about different players that come in and, oh, he's a good player or whatever, but to be a really, really great player, you've got to do it consistently over a number of years, and, and he's definitely done that. John, you want to wish Jamie all the best, especially for the weekend. Of course, I the do. Cup. Good luck, good luck <laughs> Jamie. Yes. Um, yes. Um, yeah. All the best. Great. Give your manager my regards. Well done. Thank you. He was a super player. He was indeed. John, thanks so much. You come back next week. Absolutely. Look forward look to it, Paul, likewise. as always. And Jamie, we'll see you soon. That was great. Great, thanks very much for having me. Thanks so much. Zoe will be up soon after the news. And remember, tomorrow night, it's going to be five o'clock. We will be here. Looking forward to that. Five till seven tomorrow night. Looking forward to that then. See you at five. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go! 
When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market. At Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. 